Hi there and welcome. My name is Bronson Hill and I'm the Director of Investor Relations at Nighthawk Equity, which is the passive investing company of Michael Blanc. And I'm here with the one and only Michael Blanc. Welcome, Michael. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. Thanks for taking some time today. So we're going to be educating our audience today just on you know what you as a passive investor can do to protect yourself from a market downturn. So that's uh, that kind of comes up, you know, questions are, when are we in a recession? Are we going to be in a recession? Those kind of questions. So um, first question, Michael, um, is what are some things that, you know, an investor can do to protect themselves from a market downturn? What market downturn, Bronson? What are you talking about? I, I, I didn't hear about this. What, 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 are, what are you reading, CNN People or something? Saying. People are saying, I don't know. <laughs> so it's funny you say that, but on, the, on that topic, right? Like you ask people and they're like, oh yeah, recession's coming. Why? Well, uh, I don't exactly know why, but it feels like we're overdue. And, it, and we are, and arguably we're in the longest you know, bull market, I guess, in, in a while. And however, when you press people, the fundamentals are actually really, really strong. Um, but I think there's some uncertainty out there. And I think whenever there's uncertainty, it raises the, the question and the risk level. For example, where are these tariffs going, right? So we, we don't really know. Uh, what, now, what, you know, we have an election coming up. You know, and some people, every time an election comes up, there's uncertainty. And I think the uncertainty is what causes the doubts about a market. Now, we don't know what's going to happen. And we are not of the philosophy, and neither are all good operators, that we should be sitting on our hands, not doing anything to see what happens. That's just not the way to do it. But there are things that we do to protect ourselves from a market downturn and our investors. And I think that's what you're talking about here. Um, and one of them is obviously if you're a, a passive investor looking at these multifamily syndications, I think the, the biggest the thing overarching that's most important is that you're investing with an experienced team. This is really, it's a team sport, right? And yes, it's about the market and about the deal and this and that other thing. But fundamentally, if you have a good operating team, a good operating team will take care of all those things for you. They're going to pick the right property in the right market. They will do all those things that we're going to get into, but ultimately it's someone who's got a track record, someone who's, uh, who's got an experienced team. And that's first and foremost the biggest thing an investor can do to protect them from any kind of uh, downturn, any kind of risk, is to uh, invest with an experienced team. Awesome. And you mentioned you know, having a good track record is important. What are some other types of experience that you look for with, an, uh, uh, you know, with a syndication team? Well, I mean, look at the who's the team, who's on the team, right? Uh, and what kind of experience have they have they had? And it's great if someone has a great multifamily uh, track record. And certainly, we at Nighthawk have a great track record. But it, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be investing with someone who maybe has never done a deal before, or done one deal, right? In that particular case, then look at their professional track record. Do they have do they have a track record of setting and achieving their goals? Uh, if they're an entrepreneur or a small business person. Um, have they started a business? How do they do, right? If they're an executive, how, you know, advancing in their career. So look at their past uh, performance, even if it's not directly related. Have they uh, invested in real estate before? So you're looking at behavior and you're looking at not just that one person, but you're looking also at the people around them, right? Do they, are they, do they have a board of advisors? Do they have a coach, for example? Do they have, who's their SEC attorney? Who's their property manager? So look at everyone on their team to really paint that picture. Awesome. Um, so talk to us a little bit about, you know, cash flow and, and basically from the beginning of the deal or cash flow from day one. Why is that important to have cash flow at the beginning of a deal? That's a great question. And, and that's, in fact, the other thing that we do to protect yourself from a market downtown is cash flow. Because if we get into a building that cash flows from day one, that's, that's what we're looking for. And now we're going to improve that cash flow. So, for example, if there's a market downturn, well, we have cash flow coming in. So who cares what's happening Right. We already have cash flow coming in. So this is one of the things that I don't you know, I don't do ground up development. There's plenty of people who do, but ground up development does not have cash flow. So if I'm 18 months into a ground up development and there's a recession that happens, then I don't have cash flow to service my debt. And so in my mind, not being a ground up developer, that's riskier in my mind. Uh, and so this is one thing that we do to make sure that we can ride out any kind of storm as this, make sure there's cash flow. For sure. Um how does the debt structure affect the investment during a downturn? Can you talk to that a little bit? Yeah. So the, the debt has to match the business plan. Okay. So what, what I mean by that is if I'm doing a value add deal and, I, uh, and I'm going to do a cash out refinance in two years, well, then don't put a 10-year debt on that with a giant prepayment penalty. Like that doesn't make any sense. 
right? So if you're investing in, with someone and that's their business plan and they're putting a 10 year loan on it, well, you got to ask the question, well, what about that three, four, 5% prepayment penalty? Doesn't make any sense. Uh, on the other hand, if I'm getting into a stable value add deal, why am I putting a bridge loan on it or short term five year note? That makes no sense either, right? Unless, in other words, the debt has to match the business plan. And so, uh, if I'm a, if I'm in a stable position and I have a five to seven year old hold, I want to put in long term debt because it locks in the interest rate. The interest rate now is the lowest ever. In fact, we just locked in. We're doing a deal right now, as you know, Bronson. We got a 3.48 percent interest rate. Man, I'm gonna lock that in for like ever, <laughs> right? So I want to lock that in. So in other words. Uh, let's say I'm thinking of selling in year five. Okay. Well, what happens if I can't sell in year five or don't want to? Let's say there's a recession in year four. And yes, I could sell, but my valuation is really, really low. So I don't really want to sell. And I don't because I have debt that gives me another three year runway. Well, three years is a long time. A lot of things will change. Now I can ride it out. I have long term debt. I have cash flow. I don't have to sell unless I want to. And that's something we look for. Yeah. And, you know, another thing that I hear about a lot as far as kind of protecting from the downside is just the idea of conservative underwriting and conservative assumptions. You know, if somebody's assuming things are best case scenario, are we being really conservative? So can you talk about like what does that actually look like? What are conservative assumptions and syndicated deals? Yeah, I mean, so if you're about to invest in a multifamily syndication, there are certain things you want to look for. Obviously, we talked about some cash flow from day one, appropriate debt structure, but you really want to look for conservative underwriting. So for example, uh, rental increases. So they're projecting $150 per month per unit rent increase, which is fine. It does exist, but not in year one. Okay, this is completely unreasonable. Now year two and three, you know, we're really looking for a ramp up to that over the two, three year mark because we know that if I'm going to do that, that heavy of a lift, I'm going to have to, there's going to be a, there's going to be turnover, right? There's, and there's going to be vacancies. So as I, as I turn units over to improve them, well, my, my, my tenant has to move out. Well, that unit might be empty for three months before I can fill it again. Okay. But where is that in your business plan? It certainly is not there if you're projecting a $150 increase in year one. So I would, I would look for stuff like that. Uh, the other one is vacancy rates for the same thing. Year one vacancy rate of 5% or even, you know, 8% is not really that conservative, especially when you're doing a heavy value add deal. So you also need to include, you know, not just physical vacancy where people are actually not in there, but you gotta look at total economic vacancy. These are people who are not paying their rent. These are people, and this, this could be things where you may be doing some concessions, some moving concessions, or your, your rent is below the market for whatever reason so you can fill your units up. You gotta accommodate all of that, right? So you wanna see at least around 10% for economic vacancy. It always kills me when you see stuff like 5%. It's just, it's horse manure, it's all made up. The third one to look for is the exit cap rate or the cap rate at resale. So this cap rate is essentially this multiplier uh, that is used to gauge the value of a piece of commercial real estate. So as you as you know, the higher the income, the, the higher the value, but how much higher? And it's all based on this cap rate. So the cap rate is something that comes from your broker or from appraisers, and they know what things are trading on based on comparables. And the cap rates nowadays are, you know, six, sometimes lower percent, seven percent if you're lucky. And so the bottom line, it doesn't matter where it is, but they're buying this, the operator's buying this deal at a particular cap rate going in on a trailing three uh, or trailing 12 profit and loss. And the value is based on that NOI or the net operating income that is an annualized and that cap rate is applied to get the value of that. So that's a well-known thing at the time of purchase and the operator should tell you, hey, what is the cap rate of the market and what is my cap rate going in? And you can see, oh, are we getting a deal or are we being fair market value? It doesn't really matter that much. What matters is what am I projecting in the future? So everybody knows that things are you know, pretty overpriced right now. Cap rates are really low. Uh, you know, it's very unlikely that cap rates will continue going down. Most likely, cap rates are, are going to go up slightly. So to be conservative, we want to see an exit cap that's at least 0.25 or 0.5% higher than where the market is right now. And it makes a huge difference in the returns. So really look, look for that in the syndications you're investing in. Make sure you look for the, those three things. Thanks for sharing that, Michael. I think that gives people a lot of information as far as how to protect your downside. I mean, I remember Warren Buffett said something that rule number one of investing is just don't lose money. And rule number two is don't forget about rule number one. So 
if you can limit your downside, you're really at a big advantage. So um, to our audience, just want to say thank you for, for joining us today. I uh, hope you found this valuable. I found it very valuable. Um, the biggest investment you make is the investment in yourself. And so I encourage you to go check out this report that Michael did where it compares the stock market and traditional investing to multifamily syndication. It's a very compelling uh, story. I mean, the way it's written and the, the information in there. So that's at themichaelblanc.com slash report. So go ahead and check that out if you're, you know, kind of want more information on that. And then secondly, if you want to raise your hand and say, hey, I, I really would love to do this. I want to start hearing about deals. Then go to nighthawkequity.com slash join and you can schedule a call. We'll start a relationship, get to know you. And uh, we look forward to, uh, to working with you in the future. So thanks for taking the time, everyone. And we'll see you on the next video. All right, before you go, download this report that Bronson mentioned, okay? And subscribe to this YouTube channel because you don't want to miss another one coming out next week. And hey, check out this other video.